دوست رو آیفایی لا بس ما ما ريت الصوت مالتي يطلع انما بس هيدا
So uh, good evening, Ramadan Karim. Welcome everyone to this webinar that's held by SPE Wasa section. At the first, let me introduce myself. My name is Dina and I will be moderator today. The subject of this webinar is applying machine learning in oil and gas industry. <laughs> this speaker is considered <laughs> as a distinctive female character. Today we have Maryam Sharif. So Maryam is a petroleum engineer from Lebanon. She graduated in 2022 from Lebanese American University with BE in petroleum engineer with high distinction. She's an activist PE member since 2018 and a volunteer at Pio Petro, funded by Maria College faculty since 2020. Moreover, she participated in several international competitions, including uh, Petro Bowl Student Competitions 2020. She has published a conference paper in One Petro, presented at the Middle East Oil and Gas Show and Conference in US 2021, where she was the only female and undergraduate to be presenting. Finally, Miriam is interested in application of machine learning in the energy sector. So I just want to notice that if you have any question, you can open the mic or write in the chat box. Uh, welcome, Miriam. We are so glad that you are with us, with us today. So you can start. Thank you, Dina, for this uh, introduction. And uh, I'm really happy to uh, participate in one of uh, the events that uh, is organized by SPE um, Iraq section. So as you mentioned, our webinar today will be about applying machine learning in the oil and gas industry. So today we'll be going over uh, the following. So an introduction about AI, machine learning and data science, uh, the basic types of machine learning models and some applications of machine learning in petroleum engineering. And finally, we'll be giving a specific example on how can we determine the natural gas density using uh, artificial neural networks. So as you all know, artificial intelligence, machine learning and data science, they have become famous words in the industry nowadays. Uh, so what is AI or artificial intelligence? Uh, it's a system or, or a machine that is trying to mimic the human behavior. So it covers machine learning, natural language processing, and robotics. And machine learning is considered a subfield of AI, where we try to use algorithms to come up with predictive models that uh, can be generalized for future applications. And deep learning is a machine learning technique that is inspired by the human's uh, biological neurons. And finally, we have data science. So uh, the main job of data scientists is to use a mathematical uh, analysis, statistical methods, and even machine learning algorithms in order to extract knowledge from the data uh, which is given. So people often confuse uh, the difference between data analytics, data science, and machine learning. So the, the, the notion of data analytics is broader than data science. So let's uh, briefly uh, sum up the main differences. So um, the goal of data analytics is to uh, study how to collect and process and interpret the data we have, while data science, it applies uh, machine learning algorithms, as mentioned earlier, uh, along with statistical methods and mathematical analysis in order to extract knowledge from the data. Uh, while uh, machine learning uh, al models, they, uh, they choose the appropriate algorithms for a particular problem and then try to achieve a certain reproducible result. The tools uh, which are mainly used for data analytics, it involves uh, using analytical uh, applications on structured data, while for data science, it involves using mathematical and machine learning tools uh, to work with both structured and unstructured data. And finally, machine learning, it involves using uh, mainly machine learning algorithms and analytical models. So uh, the scope of data analytics, it includes predictive modeling, risk analytics, while data, uh, data science, it involves data acquisition, data cleaning, and data investigation. 
And uh, finally, machine learning, it includes supervised, uh, unsupervised, and semi-supervised learning. So uh, the output of data analytics is trend analysis. Uh, for data science, it's a report based on key data. And the output of machine learning is a machine learning model. So basically, we have three main types of uh, machine learning uh, models. We have the supervised, the unsupervised, and the reinforcement learning. Try to uh, classify or predict outcomes accurately. So uh, the output is known, and the input data uh, or the input via input is known. Uh, the supervised learning is divided into two main categories. We have the classification and the regression. Uh, for regression, we are using algorithms to uh, predict trends uh, for uh, labeled data. And for classification, we are trying to assign uh, data, uh, data points to a certain category. Second, we have the unsupervised learning. For unsupervised learning, we use algorithms in order to try to find patterns in unlabeled data. And it's further subdivided into two main uh, categories. We have clustering. In clustering, we group data points uh, that have similar features and characteristics. Uh, for the dimensionality reduction, we try to reduce the dimensionality of a high dimensional uh, data set. And finally, we have the reinforcement learning. For the reinforcement learning, we use algorithms. Uh, we try to teach the, the model through a trial and error. And then we try to establish an, an reward for the best outcome that we get. So uh, the main differences between supervised and unsupervised learning. Uh, for the supervised learning technique, uh, the input data is labeled. We usually use a training data set, and the data is classified based on a training set. While for the unsupervised learning, the input data is unlabeled. We just use an input data set, so we don't have any desired um, output. And uh, we usually, or it usually uses properties of a given data in order to classify it. Uh, supervised learning is usually used for prediction, while unsupervised learning is used for analysis. Uh, and uh, classification, in classification, we try to predict a categorical variable. So the output values, they are uh, discrete. For example, if you want to, uh, forecast or to uh, to predict the, uh, the, the rock lithology. So uh, it's either, for example, sandstone or limestone. So the values are uh, discrete. Uh, for regression, we are predicting numeric variables. So the output values, uh, they are continuous. It, for example, if we are uh, trying to estimate uh, rock properties such as uh, permeability or porosity, and for clustering, uh, we try to identify a pattern or groups of similar objects. And for dimensionality reduction, as we can see, we are reducing the dimensionality of a multi-dimensional input. And uh, although it's considered an unsupervised learning technique, uh, we can use it sometimes as, as a pre-processing step uh, when we deal with uh, supervised machine learning algorithms. So uh, some examples of uh, supervised machine learning models that uh, are used for regression. So we have the linear and multilinear regression. We have the polynomial regression, uh, the support vector regression, uh, decision tree, random forest, and neural network. So for the multilinear regression, uh, we uh, use two or more independent variables in order to predict the outcome the outcome of a dependent variable. Uh, for the polynomial regression, it's uh, considered a special case of a multilinear regression that uh, estimates the uh, 
the relation uh, as uh, the nth degrees uh, polynomial. We also have the support vector regression. Uh, in uh, SDR, uh, regression is uh, performed on each point by allowing a certain margin error. So uh, for each data point we have, uh, it's acceptable to get a predicted value within the error margin we have. And uh, the error margin is represented by uh, two support, uh, supporting factors. For a uh, decision tree, it, we, uh, it's constructed uh, based on a, a hierarchical uh, tree structure, uh, which is built of multiple leaf nodes. So first we try to impose a condition on a, on a feature or a set of features at each leaf node. After imposing uh, this uh, specific condition, we uh, split the training data into multiple child, child nodes, depending on uh, this condition. And finally, we uh, calculate the, the predicted value by averaging the value of the samples in the terminal leaf node. And of course, during the, the training process, we try as much as we can to minimize the mean squared error between the observed and the predicted value. And finally, we have the random forest. Uh, for the random forest, uh, it uses multiple decision trees and uh, a technique called uh, bootstrap. Um, so it contains multiple decision trees. And uh, then it averages the results in order to obtain uh, an output a value uh, that can uh, predict the data accurately. So uh, some um, supervised machine learning models for classification. We have the logistic regression, the k-nearest neighbors, uh, support vector machine, the naive uh, bias, uh, decision tree, and random forest for uh, classification. So uh, the decision tree classifier, it follows the same approach as the decision tree for regression, but uh, all samples, uh, belonging to a terminal tree node, they are classified as one of the categories. Similarly, the random forest uh, classifier, it follows also the same approach as the random forest regression, uh, but a forest decision tree classifier is uh, established and the final prediction is generated based on voting instead of uh, averaging. So uh, the logistic regression, uh, it performs categorical classification. Uh, so the output belongs to either of the, the two categories and this model, it follows the, the logistic function, which is one over um, one plus e to the power minus x. And for the naive uh, base, uh, it, uh, it uh, follows uh, the base theorem. So uh, a conditional uh, probability. And we have also the support vector classifier. So uh, this algorithm, it constructs optimal hyperplanes that uh, separates the, um, that separates the samples belonging to uh, different categories. So, uh, and we have a certain margin error that separates the, the two hyperplanes. And finally, we have the k nearest neighbors. Uh, so this algorithm, it uses uh, some uh, similarity measures such as the Euclidean distance uh, in order to find the k nearest neighboring points in a, a sample data. And then uh, based on the most frequently occurring class among the k neighbors, it predicts the uh, output category. While the k-mean clustering, uh, it uses uh, the data in each of the, it creates clusters and the data in each cluster uh, has a certain uh, uh, similarity or, or feature in common. 
And uh, each cluster is created around a central point, uh, which is called a cluster centroid or cluster uh, um, center. So uh, the main uh, workflow of uh, machine learning uh, models. So first we need to uh, collect the data uh, from different sources. Um, so the quality and the quantity of the data we collect is very important because uh, it directly impacts the accuracy of the final model that we get. Uh, then we need to uh, prepare the data uh, so we need to uh, clean the data. By this, I mean that we need to remove uh, any outliers. We need to remove any instances that have missing values, or we can even estimate missing values using uh, the mean, the median, or the mode, or any other uh, technique. Uh, afterwards, we need to choose the right learning algorithm depending on the problem we have that we need to solve, and based also on the data we have. Uh, for example, if the data is labeled and the problem is to, to classify, so we need to use one of the classification algorithms. If the problem is to, uh, to fit uh, a regression, uh, to perform regression, and the data is also labeled, we need to use one of the regression models or algorithms. And then we need to train the model. We need to uh, split the model uh, to uh, two uh, sets, a training set and a testing set. Um, the common uh, split ratio is usually 70 to 30% or 80 to 20%. Uh, so 80% is usually used for uh, training and 20% is used for testing. Uh, but again, depending on the data we have and the, the, on the size of the data, and finally, we need to evaluate the model uh, using uh, certain metrics such as uh, accuracy or uh, some error metrics. And uh, if the model performed well, we can use it for uh, prediction for future applications. And in case the model did not perform well, we need to rebuild the model and adjust the hyper uh, parameters and then uh, retest the model or re-evaluated. So uh, we have uh, various applications of machine learning uh, in petroleum engineering. So machine learning uh, can help optimize and solve a various problem in the industry. Uh, here are uh, six main areas where machine learning can help the oil and gas industry. Uh, so first, we can use um, uh, machine learning to uh, for anomaly detection, for example, to know if uh, this uh, operating condition or if th this value uh, we have gotten is normal or not. Uh, we can use it for uh, prediction, so to predict certain um, value or operating condition in the future. Uh, so and we can use it also for diagnosis, so to know to which pattern or uh, to which category does this pattern belong to. We can also seek the help of machine learning to uh, replace expensive and time-consuming uh, laboratory experiments with machine learning models in order to uh, calculate or to find out uh, certain parameters. And we can also use machine learning for advanced process control and for uh, process optimization. Uh, some applications in uh, reservoir and production engineering, we can uh, have an accurate uh, estimation for the pressure, volume, temperature properties. So uh, PVT properties, they are important uh, for reservoir evaluation and for the reservoir performance. We can also predict rock properties, uh, which uh, play a key role in uh, reservoir uh, simulation. Uh, we can also uh, predict uh, the formation damage, the wax, uh, the wax deposition, and asphaltine precipitation. And we can also uh, calculate uh, some uh, two-phase properties, such as uh, the minimum miscibility uh, pressure and the interfacial tension, which are uh, important uh, when we deal with enhanced oil uh, recovery techniques. So. Uh, 
various research has been conducted in order to uh, uncover the potential of uh, machine learning in the oil and gas industry. Uh, for example, uh, Ramirez et al. He used they used the artificial neural network in order to predict the bubble point pressure and the oil formation volume factor using the temperature, the gas oil ratio, the gas uh, specific gravity, and the, the API as input uh, parameters. Another study used the ANN, the support vector machine, and the functional network in order to uh, forecast the gas oil ratio. We can also use uh, ANN and ANIFIS and the support vector machine to um, predict the saturation pressure and oil uh, viscosity. Uh, other study used ANN to predict the performance of uh, the water alternating gas uh, using the CO2 estimate. We can also apply uh, machine learning for uh, drilling engineering uh, in order to decrease the drilling cost and uh, drilling time. Uh, so uh, we can uh, forecast the mud density, the loss circulation, the mud cake permeability, filtration loss, and the cutting transport uh, efficiency prediction. So uh, Ahmed et al. used the least square support vector machine in order to uh, estimate uh, the loss circulation volume using the mud weight, the mud flow rate, the depth, and the pump pressure as um, input uh, parameters. Another uh, study used the random forest in order to predict the rate of penetration using the rotation per minute and the ultimate compressive strength and the mud flow rate as uh, input uh, parameters for the model. And we can also apply machine learning for reservoir uh, 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 evaluation and for exploration. So we can uh, estimate the shear wave velocity and predict the total organic uh, carbon using uh, the random forest decision tree and the support vector machine. So uh, now we'll be going uh, over uh, how can we determine the natural gas density using a uh, machine learning algorithm. Um, this uh, research was published uh, last year at One Petro, uh, which I was part of uh, during my undergraduate studies at LEU. So, um, natural gas density is a very important when. Um, when we try to analyze natural gas systems because it influences the calculation of different parameters such as the gas reserves, the gas pressure gradient, and the gas compressibility factor. So earlier, we used to rely on uh, laboratory experiments in order to uh, obtain the value of the natural gas density. Uh, however, as we all know, uh, they are lab laboratory experiments. They are time consuming and they are costly. Then we uh, relied on empirical correlations and models. So uh, these uh, traditional models that we have in the industry, they are limited to a certain set of operating conditions and their application. So their application is limited and they fail to obtain an accurate estimate of the natural gas density. So uh, by this, we will seek the help of machine learning in order to obtain an accurate estimation of the natural gas density. So in this study, we have used the artificial neural network uh, uh, in order to uh, train the model and uh, based on three uh, main influencing variables, which are the pseudo-reduced pressure, the pseudo-reduced temperature, and the molecular weight. Then we compared the ANN model with, a, with the ANIFIS model, uh, which is the adaptive neural fuzzy inference system. So uh, ANN uh, is um, similar, or it tries to mimic the 
the human's biological neuron. So a, an ANN is similar to a, a neuron. So a neuron has a dendrites. Uh, dendrites, they are the receivers. They receive information from other neurons. So an input in an ANN is similar to a dendrites in a biological neuron. Um, then we have the soma. It's a cell body that uh, processes information. So received from the dendrites. So a node in an ANN is similar to a soma. And then we have the axon. So it's a, like a, a cable that sends information and an output is similar to an axon. And finally, we have the uh, synapse. It connects um, the axon with the neuron. So uh, the weights in an ANN uh, is similar to the synapses. So uh, usually uh, the inputs in an, a in an ANN model are multiplied by the uh, weighted average. And then um, we pass the net input uh, to an activation function in order to uh, obtain uh, the desired output. So um, the, an activation function, it decides whether the neuron should be activated or no. So uh, it turns off and on the neuron uh, based on a certain threshold, uh, depending on what activation function we are using. And the uh, adaptive neural fuzzy inference system, it combines the learning abilities of fuzzy logic system. So uh, a fuzzy logic uh, is an approach which is uh, based on uh, degrees of truth. So rather than the usual uh, true or false or the Boolean logic. So uh, it has a uh, certain uh, degrees of truth. So for the data set, we had 4,500 uh, data points that represented the three influencing variables. Uh, so the pseudo-reduced pressure is equal to the pressure over the pseudo-critical uh, pressure. Uh, and then we divided the data into 70 to 30% ratio. So 70% was used for training and 30% was used for testing. Uh, as we can see uh, in this figure, we had a negative correlation between the uh, pseudo uh, reduced temperature and the, the gas density, and a positive correlation between the molecular weight and the pseudo reduced pressure with the input uh, variable, which is gas density. Uh, however, we had to transform the output parameter into log uh, gas density in, in order to train and test the data. So uh, we usually apply the uh, log transform in order to transform the queued distribution to a normal or a less queued distribution. So we can reduce the impact of uh, two low values or uh, the impact of two high values in the data set we have. So uh, for the data analytics, we calculated the minimum, the maximum, the average, uh, the standard deviation, the skewness, and the kurtosis of the data set. Uh, so the skewness, uh, as a reminder, it's the measure of symmetry, or in other words, the, the lack of symmetry. Uh, for keratosis, uh, it measures how heavily tailed or, or how light tailed the, the data is with respect to a normal distribution. So uh, the minimum value for the real gas density was uh, 0 0.004 grams per centimeter cube. And the maximum value was 0 0.753. The average was 0. Uh, 261 grams per centimeter cube. So uh, for modeling the data, we applied the ANN and the ANIFIS uh, to train and test the model. And then uh, in order to compare these two models and uh, to obtain the ultimate model, we used uh, 
uh, these three error metrics, so the absolute average percentage error, which is equal to the um, 100 over the n, the number of data points times the summation of the absolute uh, actual value minus estimated value over the actual value. So uh, usually, if we, if we get uh, an average absolute percentage error lower than 10%, uh, this reveals and a high accuracy for the model to predict the, the data. If we have uh, a, a val values ranging between 10% to 20%, it shows an acceptable accuracy. Uh, second, we use the uh, R squared or the coefficient of determination, which is equal to one minus uh, the summation of the actual value minus uh, the estimated value uh, squared over the actual value minus the uh, average uh, actual value uh, squared. Usually any value uh, higher than 0 0.9 shows uh, a good accuracy. And uh, finally, we have the, the root mean squared error, which is equal to the square root over of one over n times the actual value minus the estimated value squared. Uh, and any value uh, for the root mean squared error between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5, it shows uh, an acceptable and actually a good accuracy. So for the ANN model, we use the Levenberg Marquardt training um, uh, algorithm. We use the feedforward neural network which is the simplest uh, neural network. So the neuron passes uh, only uh, in one direction from the input to the hidden to the output layer. We don't have any uh, loop. So, uh, and we use the tan sigmoid uh, transfer uh, function as an activation function. So uh, the tan sigmoid transfer function, it, uh, it is equal to two over one plus e to the power minus two x plus one. So obviously it's a nonlinear function and it returns uh, output values ranging from minus one to one. We usually use the sigmoid transfer function in hidden layers of the neural network. So uh, the mean for the hidden layer, it comes out to be close to zero which helps in centering the data. And uh, this makes learning for the next layer uh, much easier. So uh, for our model, we use three layers. We use uh, one hidden layer and an input and an output layer. So the input and output layer, they represent the input and output of the model. And uh, for our uh, case, uh, the optimum scenario was using one hidden layer. Of course, we could have, uh, we, we can use more than one hidden layer for an a for an uh, ANN model, depending on the data and the problem we have. And uh, of course, uh, with experience, uh, um, we uh, someone can determine the number of hidden layers uh, faster and easier. Uh, so there is no uh, rule for it. So uh, the quantity of each neuron in the hidden layer uh, is equal to the amount of each neuron in the input layer uh, times the weighted average. So we multiply the molecular weight times the weighted average within the input layer and the uh, hidden layer. Uh, we do the same for the to reduce temperature, the to reduce uh, pressure. And finally, we need to uh, add a bias. Uh, a bias is similar to a constant in a, a linear function. So its main job is to help the model uh, fit best for, for uh, a given data. Uh, Afterwards, after obtaining the, the output values of the, the hidden layer, we need to pass it through the activation function we have, which is the tan sigmoid uh, function. Uh, we do the same uh, for the hidden layer and output layer. So uh, we multiply each value in the hidden layer times the weighted average within the hidden layer and the output layer. And then we get the, we, we should add the bias. 
And by this, we have gotten this uh, mathematical equation. So uh, by getting this mathematical equation, we can use it for, uh, for future applications if we want to uh, predict the natural gas density uh, without the need to have any prior uh, AI knowledge or um, to, to know how to deal with uh, machine learning algorithms. But of course, within the data range that we had in this um, study, uh, so by this, we, uh, we decoded the black box behavior of ANN, which is one of the biggest disadvantages of ANN models. So uh, by black, by, uh, black box behavior, we mean that usually um, ANN uh, models, they do not reveal uh, any information regarding the calculations they do or regarding the system uh, they are forecasting. But in order to use uh, this uh, mathematical equation, we need to first uh, normalize the input parameters. Uh, why do we need to normalize the input parameters in order to uh, change the uh, numeric values into a common scale ranging from zero to one? So uh, normalizing the input parameters will help uh, speed up the learning process. So uh, the equation for uh, normalization is equal to uh, y max minus y min times uh, x uh, minus x min uh, over x max minus x min, and then we add the y min, the minimum value of y. We obtain the maximum and the minimum value of y uh, as a positive one and negative one. And we obtain the x max and x min from the, this table. So for the pseudo reduced temperature, we do plus one, minus minus one, and then we uh, insert the pseudo reduced uh, temperature as uh, the variable, minus the minimum value, which is minus 3.89, uh, over uh, the maximum value, which is uh, 2.68, minus minus the minimum value of the pseudo reduced temperature. And finally, we add the y min, which is uh, negative one. By this, we have gotten this equation. We do the same for the pseudo reduced pressure and the molecular weight. Uh, then we need to denormalize the output parameters. So uh, we use the same equation. However, uh, the x max and the x min, they uh, are valued as positive one and negative one, while we obtain the y max and y min uh, from the table. And since we uh, transform the density into log gas density, we need to uh, remove the log at the end and return the values into real gas density values. For the ANIFIS model, or the adaptive neural fuzzy inference system, we used subtractive uh, clustering, which was implemented uh, or established based on uh, cluster radius. So the optimum cluster radius was uh, 0.2. I performed the, the most accurate uh, gas density prediction uh, using the uh, given data set. So uh, in summary, we use the feed-forward neural network for ANN. We use the Levenberg mark for training algorithm. Uh, we use the tan sigmoid transfer function and a sig single hidden layer containing 11 neurons. For the ANIFIS model, we use uh, the cl uh, cluster radius of 0.2. So uh, comparing the model performance of um, ANN and the ANIFIS, so the root mean squared error for the ANN training data was uh, 0 .0, uh, or 0 0.0153, lower than that of the ANIFIS training data, which was 0 uh, 0.0287. Uh, 
the absolute average percentage error uh, for the ANN training data was uh, 3,852. Uh, also lower than that of the ANIFIS training data, which was about 11,778. Uh, and uh, we can notice um, in this table that the training data, the, tra the training error and the testing error uh, for the ANN model, they were uh, somehow um, close to each other and also for the ANIFIS model. Uh, in case we had the, test, the testing error higher than the training error, this, mean, uh, this means that uh, the, the model is overfitting. Uh, from the uh, scatter plot, we can notice that the um, coefficient of determination of the ANN uh, training data was uh, 0 0.993, uh, also higher uh, than that of the ANIFIS uh, training data, which was 0 0.978. So, um, since the, uh, the R squared was uh, higher for the ANN and the, uh, the root mean squared error and the average absolute uh, percentage error were lower for the ANN model. So this means that uh, the ANN model performed uh, better than the ANIFIS model for uh, predicting uh, the natural gas density. So uh, in conclusion, uh, as mentioned, the ANN outperformed the ANIFIS in terms of the least error. Uh, we developed an, a, a model that, uh, an ANN model that allows uh, to have an accurate calculation of the gas density values within the data the range that, that we had in this study. So uh, ranging between uh, the, the gas density values, they ranged between uh, 0 0.004 and, uh, grams per centimeter cube and 0 0.753 grams per centimeter cube. So uh, this research uh, was able to decode the, the black box behavior of ANN by providing a mathematical equation that can be used without having any prior AI knowledge. But um, again, within the data range that we had in this study. Okay, uh, thank you for uh, attending, and uh, I hope you have learned uh, something new today. And uh, in case you have any questions, or I'm ready to answer. Thank you. As I mentioned in the beginning, if you have any question, you can write it in the chat box or open a mic. Um, just, Mariam, could you answer the question in Arabic? Uh, okay, I, I will try. Okay, thank you. Okay, someone is asking if there's a certificate. Uh, or attending. Okay, we have Mohammed. Yes, uh, good uh, evening. Uh, and uh, thank you for uh, this great uh, presentation. I have uh, one question you say that uh, uh, divided uh, to Sub in uh, over Latin train and test data. So uh, my question: Why there is no data to blind forecasting? Uh, uh, can you repeat the question? Uh, you say data will divide it to seventy uh, thirty. Okay. Yes. Uh, why there is uh, no data to blind forecasting? You know uh, this uh, percentage not enough to say it is good or not uh, only by depending on the train and test data uh, we need uh, something blind data for blind forecasting to test the model
You understand? Uh, actually, I didn't understand your question, but uh, uh, in general, uh, we can we can have uh, different split ratios, uh, of course, depending on, on the data we have. Uh, we can also have um, another ratio to uh, evaluate the model. So we can perform testing, training, and evaluating depending on the problem we have uh, and on the case we have. Uh, and how okay, complicated the, the, okay, the model thank is. You, thank you. Many times. Uh, okay, I can add some comments about this question, if you allow me, Mariam. Yes, sure. Uh, this, the way that we split the data into two subsets, 70% for training and 30% for testing, this process is called the cross-validation. And in cross-validation, we have uh, many different scenarios or many different approaches. The first one, that we just talked about it, it was random subsampling cross-validation. We have also K-fold cross-validation, cross and we have the third most common types. Uh, uh, in addition to these two types, we have uh, leave one out cross-validation. So about splitting the data and the the person that just asked his question, he, he was asking about blind uh, forecasting. The testing procedure when you split the data into two kinds, one for training, one for testing, the one for training is for modeling. Testing is a blind forecast. It can, can be considered as blind forecast or blind prediction because you, you build an equation on the training and we use the trained equation for a prediction on different data set. So this is exactly what we do to, uh, to conduct blind prediction for our modeling. Uh, can uh, I add something? Okay, go ahead. Okay, right. Okay. براحتك آه، انا سابقا مشتغل على المشين ليرنينج واشتغلت اكثر من مشروع يعني سواء مشروع التخرج او حتى بالعمل آه، اللي صار شنو انه احنا بنشتغل مجرد ما نسوي آه، نسوي داتا نقسمها ما بين تيست وترين داتا وبعدين يكمل الموديل مالته من نريد نطبقه بالواقع ما راح يعطي النتائج المرجوه من عندك لان تعرف انه المشين ليرنينج بها رينج معين وبها اخطاء تصير فايش نحتاج؟ نحتاج اول ما نكمل الموديل مالتنا، يعني فد خطوه انه الداتا مالتنا نقسمها ثلاث اقسام، تصير جزء راح يصير معتها للتيست وجزء راح يصير معتها للترين داتا واكو جزء راح يبقى هذا ما يدخل بالموديل اصلا، يعني ورا ما اكمل الموديل مالتي انطي هاي الداتا واشوف النتائج اللي تطلع لي هي فعلا نتائج مقبوله لو لا. اوكي. آه هذه الخطوه كلش ضروريه بالمشين ليرنينج موديلينج. آه شنو شنو الحاله اللي تقسم بها الداتا؟ شنو في اي في اي مجال اكزاكتلي exactly. يعني شنو التوبك؟ يعني وين بالريزفر كاركترايزيشن بالريزفر سيميليشن آه بالبريدكشن وين؟ انا استخدمتها بالضبط استخدمناها بحساب الشير فيلوسيتي ها آه اوكي آه بالفورميشن ايفالويشن اوكي هو, هو أه الصوره أه الصورة اللي شرحتها مو ما تختلف عن الصورة اللي شرحناها يعني الصورة هي نفسها انت من تجي تسوي تقسم الداتا الى 70% للترين يعني راح تبني المعادلة على 70% من الداتا فتبقى 30% موجودة عندك بها اكس وبها واي فانت تجيب المعادلة اي المعادلة اللي بنيتها على 70% تجي تطبقها على التيست على الاكس وتطلع الواي بعدين تقارن بين الواي المقاسة اصلا اللي موجودة مع الواي اللي حسبتها بالمعادلة المبنية على الترين هنا راح يصير عندك اكسترنال بريدكشن يعني تسوي بريدكشن على معادلة هذه الداتا اللي جاي يسويها ايفالويشن او تشيكينج ما داخلة ما كانت انبوت بهذه المعادلة هو نفس الشيء يعني اما تقسم الى 3 ترين تيست فاليديشن او ترين تيست ذاتس انف لا استاذ عفوا بس اوضح لك شيء شيء ال ال 30% اللي راح ياخذها التيست راح ياخذها راندوملي يعني مثلا اذا عندي فد الف 
اوه راح ياخذ مثلا من ال 20 من ال 30 نقطه مثلا من النقطه رقم 40 ياخذها وهكذا واضح؟ اوكي احنا شرحنا بالانجليزي بالبدايه انه طريقه اسمها راندوم سب سامبلينج فبالتالي الداتا ما راح تجي تقسمها بالتسلسل راح تسوي لها راندوم سب سامبلينج احيانا بالسب سامبلينج بالسب سامبلينج احيانا شنو يسوون؟ يسوي ريبيتيشن للداتا الى اذا الداتا 100 100 ميجرمنت يسويها 5000 او 10000 يسوي ريبيت بالداتا سب سامبلينج واضح زين واضح. وبعدين يسوي ميكسينج الها يعني يغير الترتيب مالتها ومن يجي يسوي 30% 30% يصير راندوملي مو متسلسل اكيد اكيد هذا السالفه فبالتالي راح يتحقق ف... هذا الغرض اللي انت جاي تقصده يتحقق بالراندوم سب سامبلينج يعني اكو بحث موجود اعتقد بحث ست مريم عندها بحث تم تقديمه في مؤتمر ميدل ايست اويل اند جاز كونفرنس ان بحرين اي ثينك 2 ييرز اور 3 ييرز اي دونت نو اكزاكتلي واكو بحث موجود اكزاكتلي اباوت كروس فاليديشن اند بوت سترابينج بحث انه موجود مقدم في الاس بي لوبر موبيلتي سيمبوزيوم ان دنفر كولورادو in 2016 if you text us on telegram i can give you the number the sbe paper number i don't remember its number now it has detailed description about the three methods of cross validation with real field application تمام تمام ان شاء الله دكتور ان شاء الله شكرا جزيلا اوكي Uh, sorry, Mariam, could you open the mic? Okay, sorry. Um, I was asking if my uh, internet uh, is good and you can hear me well. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Okay. Uh, some people are asking how can uh, to suggest some useful resources for learning machine learning. Um, actually, with the online uh, thing, uh, we can easily nowadays learn new skills. Uh, so you can take courses at uh, Coursera or Udemy. Um, you can also uh, seek some uh, tutorials on YouTube. We have also a lot of newly published books uh, for machine learning applications, specifically in uh, petroleum engineering. Since uh, 2019, there, are, uh, there have uh, been published several books. So I suggest to um, also seek uh, the help of books and um, yes so uh, we, you can easily uh, learn uh, this skill uh, alone without the need of uh, learning it uh, in your uh, at your university So uh, if no one has a question, uh... okay, so by this, uh, I thank you for this invitation. Uh, so uh, I was really pleasure to uh, uh, present uh, this uh, uh, presentation today. Uh, so Ramadan Karim, and uh, I hope you have uh, a nice uh, evening. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Maria, for this valuable and informative session. Thank you, and have a nice day. So now we're going to end the session and say goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>